Fox's Peter Ducey also questioned John Kirby. Listen to this exchange. John, who's going to get fired over this? Peter, the purpose of the document that we're putting out today uh, is to sort of collate the chief reviews and findings of the agencies that did after action reviews. Um, uh, the, it, it, it's not, the, the purpose of it is not accountability. There were some pieces here that weren't accurate. And we're being nothing but honest with you. And you're saying that you guys are proud of the way that this mission was conducted? Does proud it mean of that? Proud of the fact that we got more than 124,000 people safely out of Afghanistan? You bet. Proud of the fact that American troops were able to seize control of a defunct airport and get it operational in 48 hours? You bet. Proud of the fact that we now have about 100,000 Afghans, our former allies and partners, living in this country and working towards citizenship? You bet. Now, does that mean that everything went perfect in that uh, evacuation? Of course not. I've talked about it from a, di a different podium. The after action reviews are now being reviewed by members of Congress, which will lay out things that could have gone better. Nobody's saying that everything was perfect. But there was a lot that went right. And a lot of Afghans are now living better lives in this country and other countries around the world because of the sacrifices and the work of so many American government officials. So, yeah, there's a lot to be proud of, Peter. Yeah, it wasn't perfect, and I'm not so sure the word proud should be in there. Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg joins me now. So, should we be proud of what was accomplished in that withdrawal, and, and who should be fired? Yeah, Ashley, thank you for having me this morning. Look, let me start at the, the yeah. very beginning here. Read the Constitution of the United States, Article 2, Section 2. The president is commander in chief. Everything that happens on his watch in the military is his responsibility. And for somebody to push it back to the last administration, that's absurd. I think I ruined a TV set last night when I threw something at it after <laughs> hearing what was going on in, in the press conference. Look, it, it was pretty clear what we did when, and I was in the White House for four years, and I saw what we did on trying to do the drawdown. And when we came up with the Doha Agreement, which was signed on the 29th of February, 2020, that began the final drawdown, and we did it with the Taliban. And it was a very clear document. People can pick it up and look on it online. Four parts to that. In part three, it said very clear, clearly that the Taliban will, will, that's a declarative verb, will negotiate with the Ghani government the, the government in power to have a coalition type of government and then we would have forces on the ground until that was complete. We never would have given up Bagram Air Place. We never would have walked away from it until there was a peace plan in process. And it's frustrating for me to hear that coming from the White House podium. Are we proud? No. Am I proud that we left 10 percent of the Americans in Afghanistan behind? That's not Keith Kellogg saying it, Ashley. That came out of Secretary Blinken. Mm. He said, well, we got 90 percent of the Americans out. That's absurd. So am I proud of that? No. Am I proud we lost 13 great Americans at the bombing at Abbey Gate? No. And where did that bomb bomber come from? He came out of the prison at Bagram that once Biden turned the, the uh, Bagram over to the Taliban, they released all of the prisoners. That can be found in John Sopko's report. He's a special IG for Afghanistan reconciliation. That's a public report. That's where the bomber came from. So for people to say they're proud of it, I'm not proud of it at all. And then you said who should be fired? Well, I said months ago yeah. that I think the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chief bear responsibility for their recommendations, and if they weren't followed, they should leave, voluntarily leave. And if I'm not mistaken, this administration said, well, what's the talk of all of this chaos, you know? Uh, and, and what makes me yeah. so mad is you just have to look at the video, the absolute, you know, collapse of any law and order. You know, hundreds of uh, Afghans trying to jump on a plane um, that's taking off. I mean, that's the very definition of chaos. Yeah, Ashley, look, here's the other thing that's very important to understand is Joe Biden never picked yeah. up the phone and talked to the Taliban negotiator, Mullah Barader. We got him out of a Pakistani prison because President Trump negotiated with Imran Khan in Pakistan, and they released Barader. Well, why was Barader so important? He was the designated successor to Mullah Omar, who led the Taliban. That's the reason we got him out. And I was on the phone call, listened to the phone call in the Oval Office, when President Trump talked to both Ghani the, in Afghanistan to get on board with the negotiations, and when he talked to Barader. And he made it very clear to Barader during that discussion that if you harm a single American, the deal is off. 
In that one year until we left office, there was not a single American killed in Afghanistan. And there was 13 killed during right. a chaotic debacle uh, moving out of Afghanistan uh, at Abbey Gate. Well, we're going to have to leave it there, Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg. But you know what, General? I feel your anger. You're fuming, as are many other people, with the results of this report. Hopefully you can have a deep breath and enjoy this uh, holiday weekend. But thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Ashley.